Hello, my name is Matthew Penning and I'm here with another lecture snippet. In this video, I'm going to go through the process of actually downloading the installation disk for Ubuntu 14.04 and setting it up in a virtual box, virtual machine. And so I'm here at the web page right now and what I need to do is actually download the installation disk. So what I'm going to do is go to download and go to the desktop and then choose which version I want to work with. There are two versions available here. 14.04 is the long-term support edition, which is supported up to five years, and I typically would use this for a production environment. If you wanted the latest and greatest to see what Ubuntu is coming out with, you can get Ubuntu 14.10. And then every two years, they come out with a new long-term support edition. So the next one would be version 16.04, when that comes out in 2016. But I'm going to go ahead and work with this one here now, and I'll just go ahead and choose Download. If you wish to give money to Ubuntu to help them, you can definitely do that here. They actually provide a setup for you to actually pay for it with PayPal. For this video, I'm going to go ahead and just choose to say not now, but take me to the download. And I'll go ahead and click on that. And in a moment here, the download prompt will, there it is, ask me to save it. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to actually download it, but I would just hit OK. For my case, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel because I have it downloaded. Okay, let's move to VirtualBox now. So after we have the ISO file, I need to set up an actual container or a virtual machine to actually work with this installation disk that I have just downloaded. So what I need to do now, and you can see that I currently have four different operating systems already set up in virtual machines, is create a new one. So let's go ahead and hit new. And let's go ahead and give it a name. I'll just call this one Ubuntu. I'll just call it Desktop. If I wanted to, I can put in, maybe I'll put 14.04. All right, there we go. And you can see that the type has automatically been set to Linux now, and the version is already Ubuntu, the 64-bit version of the operating system. So everything here has been set for me. All I need to do is hit Next. I can go ahead and set how much RAM I want to allocate to the actual computer. I currently have eight gigs of RAM here on my computer. Now, I don't want to use all eight, because if I do that, then I don't leave anything left for my host computer to run. So I want to pick something that is at least the minimum amount of memory for the operating system, and uh, depending on what I plan on doing with it, is an appropriate amount. For the most case, for this, two gigs of RAM should do just fine, and I'll go ahead and pick 2048. I'll go ahead and hit Next. Now I get to go ahead and set up the hard drive for it. I don't already have another hard drive that I'm going to import into this one here, so I'm going to leave the default and just say create a virtual hard drive now. I'll go ahead and hit create. There are quite a few different versions here for what type of hard drive I want to set up, all depending on what software you plan on using this virtual machine with. Now I only plan on using it with VirtualBox, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it as the default VDI. But if you plan on using other software like uh, VMware or so forth to run virtual machines in, you can change the hard drive type to suit them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit next for this one here. Now I get to decide, do I want to actually have a hard drive that grows in size up to my maximum that I set for it? Or do I want to actually reserve the whole entire space of the hard drive as a single file to begin with? What I mean by that is, let's just say I have 20 gigs that I allocate for my hard drive. Well, if I pick this option here called dynamically allocated, if I only use five of that 20, then my file size will only be five gigs. But if I pick fixed size, it'll actually reserve all 20 gigs on my hard drive here. So I typically prefer to use the dynamically allocated. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next for that. And then it's gonna come up and ask me what I wanna call my hard drive. And I'll just go ahead and leave it as the default here, 14.04 desktop. 8 gigs is a little too small for what I plan on using. Um, because it's dynamically allocated, it's really not going to only take up whatever I use. So basically, if I put something like 50 gigs, it's not going to reserve all 50 gigs, but it could grow to that size. So that's a good size for me to work with, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit Create. Okay, so now the virtual machine has been created. I could go into the settings here and set that ISO file to, to actually work with it. In fact, I'll show you where that would be. Uh, if I go to settings, I can then go to storage, and you'll see that at the moment, here it says empty. This is for the CD-ROM, which is that ISO file that I had downloaded. I could load that in there by clicking on it and then using this icon right here to actually set it as that ISO file in my downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. 
because most of the time when I do this, I actually just go ahead and hit start, and then I get this screen that says select the startup disk to actually use to install the operating system. So if you happen to hit cancel or you don't hit the right one here, come back to the settings over here and you can actually set it. But I'm going to go ahead and choose this little folder now, and let's go to my downloads folder, which I'm already here at my downloads, and I'm going to choose the desktop version that I already had downloaded, and I'll go ahead and hit open. And then all I need to do now is hit start. So it's going to use that downloaded ISO file that I have, that's the installation disk for Ubuntu, and it's going to actually load it into this virtual machine. It's going to take a little while, so what I'm going to do is I'll come back and pause this video when I get to the login screen here. Okay, so I'm now at the welcome screen and I have two different options to choose from. I can either continue to run this as a live CD, which is going to give me the experience of seeing what this operating system is all about without, without actually installing it at all. That's the try Ubuntu option. Or I can already begin the installation process. And I plan on installing this, so I'm going to go ahead and choose install Ubuntu. And this is, and this is going to go ahead and start the installation wizard for me. So now it says install. And here are my prerequisites. I have to have 6.5 gigs of available drive space, which I have reserved up to 50, plugged into a power source, which it is, and I'm also connected to the internet, which I already have. I have the option here of downloading updates while installing, and then I can also say install the third-party software. And this is software that cannot come with Ubuntu by default because it might not necessarily be open source. It will be free, but it may be closed source programming. So if you choose, want to choose to install that, I would actually recommend clicking that and I might as well do the updates while I'm installing as well. So I'll go ahead and hit continue. Okay, so it says now that the computer has no current operating systems detected. So I have a couple different choices of what I want to set up. And for the small hard drive that I have, I'm not going to choose the logical volume management option. It was only a 50 gig hard drive. I don't necessarily need to do that. Um, I don't need to encrypt my entire system, which is the second option here, which would do the whole disk encryption here for Ubuntu, which is a great option if I need it, but in this case, I don't really need it for what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as the erase disk and install Ubuntu. And that will install Ubuntu on the entire 50 gigs that I have set up, and it will do all of the mapping of drives and everything, so I don't really have to do anything at all. If you wanted to do your own partitionings, you could choose something else, and it would allow you to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just choose to install now. Okay, so now it's just the time zone. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And now my keyboard layout, which everything on here is what I'm using, so I'll just go ahead and hit continue again. Okay, now my name. And for my name, I'll just go ahead and use my name. And you'll notice that the computer name takes part of that. And then also my username does as well. So for my computer name, if this is what I wanted for my computer name, I can definitely use this one. I'll just call it Matt well, Matt-Ubuntu-Vbox. There we go. So that's a name for me to use for my computer. Okay, I also have the username. Now the username is going to be lowercase, and it's going to take the first part of your name. You can definitely change it if you want, but one thing to keep in mind is you want it to be a lowercase name. For all Unix-based systems, we want to have lowercase usernames and only one word. Okay, for the password, let's go ahead and type in a password. And I'm going to use something really simple here. It may yell at me. It tell, told me it was a fair password, so that's going to allow me to use the simple one I put in here. But you want to have something in here that's definitely a decent password. I can choose to log in automatically uh, if I wanted to. Um, however, uh, what I want to do is actually require my password, and I'm also going to say encrypt my home folder in this case. Again, this is not necessary, but what this is going to do is for this particular user account, it's going to encrypt all of the files under their directory. So if anything you save on there. And for the security, it provides it's a decent option in the event that something happens to your computer. 
um, as far as if this was a regular computer I was installing it on, your files are going to be very difficult for somebody to break this encryption to be able to pull off whatever was on your desktop or your downloads and so forth. So I like doing this at least for my home directory, if not for the entire hard drive itself. And I'll go ahead and hit continue. Okay, so now it's going to go through the process of, act of actually installing everything here for me. And it's going to take a little while for it to install, maybe 10-15 minutes, uh, depending on your internet connection and the downloading of all the updates that are available for it. But I'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll come back when I get to the next step. Okay, so now the installation has been done. You can see it took about a 20, a little over 20 minutes for me to go through the process of installing everything here. But all I need to do now is go ahead and hit restart now. And so let it restart. And when it boots back up, I'm going to be prompted with the boot up screen or the login screen. Okay, it looks like my system is actually hanging up a little bit here on the reboot. So I'm just going to go ahead and force the power off. I'll move the mouse over here to the close the virtual machine and just choose to power it off. And that's happened. That happens every once in a while with installing the virtual machines. I'm going to go ahead and hit start and it should power back on and now I should be presented with the login screen. Okay, now I have the login screen and I'm ready to work with Ubuntu 14.04. If you want to know more about virtual machines or Linux, visit my website at lecturesnippets.com. All right, have a great day. Thanks.